So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone who's going to watch the replay or is here with us tonight as we go through this class, which is minimalist home maintenance and minimalist health maintenance. So Shira is going to start us off. She is Ms. Fixit, and she has over 20 years of experience in construction, and she's going to walk us through probably a bunch of stuff that I know I don't do whatsoever. So I'm super excited to learn from her of do it yourself stuff that you should do on a regular basis and check so that you can make sure that your home stays up to date and the way that it needs to be. And also a couple of things will help your health as well. And then when she's done, I'm gonna go over seven things that you need to have immediately to boost your immune system and keep your health, especially if you're somewhere like up north and we're in the winter time like me. But with the things that we have circling the planet right now, everyone is concerned about their immune system. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Shira so she can start her portion. All right, thanks for having me, Tashina. As Tashina already mentioned, I have over 20 years, 25 to be exact, I started at a, as a five-year-old, in case you're wondering, um, experience in construction. So I started as an electrician. I still am an electrician, that's usually my day job, but about mm, maybe six years ago, seven, I started um, flipping trailers and tiny homes and now I live in um, kind of a container home on wheels the entire journey of that can be found on my channel she's electric s-h-e-e-z-e-l-e-c-t-r-i-c -E 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 it is also in the chat box for those of you that are with us on zoom please follow me there um, I also have Ms. Fixit um, on Instagram please Feel free to follow me there too. And um, I provide DIY tutorials on how to, to do just about anything. Most everything is electrical related with me, but I have branched out. Now I'm at my own handy woman, started the company Ms. Fix It about a year ago during COVID time so I could control my exposure a little bit better. And so um, I'm all about minimalist living because the less you have, the less you have to take care of. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. And feel free if you have any questions to, um, to save them till a little bit later. I'm just going to go through some basic home maintenance. I really was racking my brain on um, what are some things that are general that everybody needs to do in their home. So um, what I did find is that to be truly minimalist and sustainable, it's not enough to just um, use repurposed objects, which is something I love doing. I'm all about repurposing, dumpster diving, recycling. This entire home was um, given up on and yet it, it became my home and everybody loves it. So everything is sustainable. But when you're thinking about um, maintaining your home, no matter what size it is, apartment, etc. You want to opt for sustainable cleaning supplies and you want to make sure that you are avoiding clutter, especially in a small space. The less you have, the better. So you'll see little things in my home. Like you'll see, I have the guitar hanging up. You want to have things to, to hang your things on, right? And that requires maintenance every now and then when you see things starting to sag, like my guitar was doing and kind of still is doing. <laughs> You're going to go in and with your screwdriver, tighten up those screws. Those are some basic maintenance. But another thing that I thought about that um, everybody has in their house, even though they may be different, I'm going to switch to my other account right now. So let me turn this camera off a minute. Here we go. So with this one, I'm trying to be technologically inclined, but I'm not. Here we go. So let me flip this camera around. Mm, I did know how to do this once upon a time on Zoom. On okay, there we go. All right. So here, let me turn down my volume on another speaker. We have my window unit. Not the fanciest thing, but once again, it's repurposed, recycled, it's actually already in the home. The vent, my, you know, filter, I should say. It's kind of homemade, but it's actually a very good one. <laughs> what I love about this is, once again, it's something that's repurposed, like it can be reuse it's sustainable so at least once a month um, more often if you live in places like florida you want to make sure you're vacuuming out 
these uh, vents, whatever your air conditioning unit is, which this one needs to be done, ah, oh, for shame. <laughs> and washing your um, filter also with mild detergent and water is fine. So these kind of things are gonna help your air quality in your home, of course, that's very important safety wise. Um, also in Florida, at least, we have mold issues. So a little bit of mold remediation, something you can do before it gets to be a big problem. Something I do, if you have a dehumidifier, great. If you don't, I have these little cheats right here. Let me see if I can find one of mine. Here we go. I get mine from the Dollar Tree, but you can get them, you know, damp rid, like the real thing is fine. But these at the Dollar Tree guys, they absorb so much moisture. They also have charcoal in them. So that's going to help you, especially in the winter, I think everywhere in the world, you have condensation issues a lot of time because you've got the heat running and then the air, you know, combines. And so that can really cause a lot of extra humidity you don't want in the house. So you're going to want to use something like this, just get them a, a dollar a piece, or you can actually go all in and get a dehumidifier um, to help extract some of that moisture. And that's going to prevent mold. Now, if you do find some spots of mold, don't panic. A little bit of mixture of uh, three quarters water and a little bit of bleach is what I usually do at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, because I'm in Florida, and wiping, wipe down the walls. Okay, so those are two very simple maintenance things that should be done in your home. Um, at least Mm, I would say at least once a year, but quarterly wouldn't be bad either, depending on where you're living. All right. And so now we're going to move. You guys are going to get a mini tour of my house, too. We're going to move into the main living area and you'll see my smoke detector. Now, this is a little piece of something that should be in everybody's home. You'll see mine has this little button you can push to test to see if it's working but I also saw it flashing already. I don't wanna deafen you guys, so I'm not gonna push the button. But the battery I found out recently should be changed at least once a year, even before it's chirping. We've all been in people's houses where that annoying chirping is going on. Don't be that person. Besides the fact it's super annoying, <laughs> you wanna make sure that your uh, smoke detector is working correctly because if not, then if there's a fire, you won't know. So that's one thing that I think is very important on annual maintenance. You see how easy it is to come down, right? It goes back in there and twist, okay? So even before it starts chirping, you want to do that at least once a month, I would push the button to hear if it's working. Now, not everybody's, um, not everyone's, how can I put it? Not everyone's smoke detectors are hardwired and battery power. So if yours is, I'm um, gonna echo, okay. If yours is only battery, then that's fine. That's all you need to do is just change the battery. That's what mine is. I didn't wire it into my house, even though I'm an electrician. Um, if it's also hardwired, then if it's chirping, it may be another battery in the series in your house that isn't working. So you just have to go. I would recommend just change all the batteries at once. Once you do one, then you'll know that they've all been changed recently. Okay, so that's maintenance item number three. They're super simple, right? You wanna clean your AEC filters regularly. You wanna try to prevent mold growing in your house by using the dehumidifiers, the, the little ones like I have if you want, or like a legit one, that's cool. And you want to make sure that your smoke detectors are working. And um, yeah, check that out at least once a year, but you're probably going to need to do it more often than that. Make sure you have some batteries on hand. All right. Let's see. What else did I have in my notes? Nice. That was me. All right. So I uh, saw here something to, about investing in quality appliances. And that sounds 
like it's not really related to maintenance, but it is because if you do have, if you are in a situation like mine that you own your home, you own these things in the home, the less, the better quality it is, the less often you have to maintain it, the less often you have to um, switch it out or pay more for maintenance. So in order for you to uh, make it simpler, I'm not gonna lie, I don't necessarily spend a lot of money on the things that I buy, but I try to make sure that they're decent quality. So even secondhand, if you're going to be going to uh, Goodwill or getting it on let go, which is how I get a lot of my stuff, um, make sure that you are getting something that has a pretty reliable brand name. I'm gonna give you an example. My little refrigerator here, E-Wave. <laughs> no um here we go so yes in the notes that I put that um your space can have an impact on your overall mental health <laughs> and I think we all know that right uh decluttered space is a decluttered mind etc cetera, etc cetera. so if you have a small space especially um you want to cut back on what you have you don't need five coats maybe you just need three so minimizing how much you have in your life will also lower stress levels, et cetera. And I highly recommend that. All right, there was, okay, where we were. Clean oven. If you have an oven, I don't I have a little toaster oven. So you wanna make sure you're cleaning your oven regularly. I don't have a video on that on my channel, but there are many on YouTube. Can't specifically recommend any. But um, what I've read about how important it is to do that, especially if it's a gas stove, once again, those valves can get clogged. You don't want that to happen. You wanna make sure that you're keeping those lines clean so that the gas can flow through. If it's an electric stove, it's a little less maintenance involved, but especially gas stove, you wanna make sure that you're gonna clean that at least once a year, even if it doesn't look like it needs it and you barely cook. <laughs> These things happen, okay? Um, another thing that I don't actually have in my little house is a dryer. So your dryer has a vent that goes out right? You've all seen that like flexible tube that goes out the back of the dryer. So that's supposed to carry your lint outside. What happens a lot of times is that gets clogged and that could be a fire hazard. So once again, these are little things like vents, but it can make a big difference in how well your dryer works. Once again, you want it to last longer. And in, um, as far as a fire hazard, you don't want anything. Lint is combustible. You know, so if it's getting a lot of heat to it and the air is hot air is passing through there, that is a possible fire hazard. So you want to make sure you clean that out regularly, not just a little vent thing that you take out and clean off there, but the exhaust part, wherever it's going out, you want to clean that up. All right. Uh, we also have on the list of maintenance, clean gutters. Once again, doesn't apply to me, but I'm trying to do this in general for everybody else. <laughs> so cleaning gutters and for me, I have a flat roof. So at least once a year, I make sure I get up there safely on a ladder and sweep it off. Because when you have leaves stacking up on your roof or in your vent, it's um, going to attract water and bugs, once again, that are going to decompose and have a detrimental effect on your roof. So, and uh, your you know, the, the, what do you call that thingy? The gutters too. So you want to make sure you're cleaning those out regularly. Um, I think biannually, it would be more than enough annually in my case. So especially after fall, I recommend people do that because you've got a lot of leaves, clean them up. Don't just leave them there because as they decompose, they'll cause, they encourage rot and you don't want that. Another simple thing that you can do around your home, you want to leave anything once again, that is um, decomposable wood, like piles of wood or um, things that may attract termites. And in my case, carpenter ants. Carpenter ants are out of control out here. I'm in the woods. So carpenter ants 
eat wood, just like termites do. You do not want them around. So regular pest control mediation, but also don't encourage them by putting places for them to live. So if you put like plastic down too close to the house, that water that collects palmetto bugs, ants, um, you name it. They love those kind of environments. They love dampness and moisture. So you're going to think I'm really anti-dampness and moisture, but I live in Florida. <laughs> it's like, it attracts all sorts of creepy crawlies. You don't want that. All right. Then let's see, we said check for, yeah, pest control regularly. Do, 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 do. Um, check for mold mildew. We discussed that. The smoke detector. Oh, this is a fun fact that I found out that smoke detectors have expiration dates on them. Didn't know that. So they're located in a different place on each smoke detector. That's why I didn't show you on mine. But you're going to want to check for that because every 10 years, they have an expiration date. So if you're in a rental situation, make sure you bring that out to your super. Maybe they need to update that. That might be the reason, too, for the constant chirping. It might just be dead. So once again, that goes back to general safety and your household maintenance. Make sure that those kind of uh, small items are taken care of. Another recommendation I have is to have a fire extinguisher in your home and a first aid kit. So that doesn't quite go into maintenance, but it does go into safety and it's all under the same umbrella. So let's see, let's, uh, a quick review of what we talked about so far would be lots of vents, right? AC vent, dryer vent, the vent hood <laughs> filter vent, and um, yeah, making sure that you are doing simple things like testing your smoke detector a, a couple of times in the year and keeping things that could attract bugs and termites and ants away from your home, especially from the edges of it, because they can crawl up that into your home. Uh, regular pest control, whatever you choose to use, if it's something more natural, whatever, as long as it's effective. If you do have allergy issues, which most of us do these days, um, I love the damp rid, once again, the air filter. I have a HEPA air filter. Those are good to have, and those air filters too, they're recyclable. So you wanna make sure that you're cleaning those filters regularly there. Um, I think those were all that we collect, we covered so far, right? Yep. Okay, so for up north, I have a few specialty items, not that I really know, cause I've never lived in the cold. I'm Caribbean, we don't do that. Um, <laughs> but there are, many things that also apply for us here in Florida. So I put a note there, make sure your generator is gassed up and that your spare batteries are charged. For those up north, you wanna do that in the winter. Well, before it gets to be winter, ideally. Um, for us, when it's hurricane season, both of those things are very important. So if you do have a generator, make sure you have plenty of spare gas. Um, and I have a video about that on my channel too, how to install your own generator, good to have. And um, spare batteries for your flashlights. You know, many of us have to, to go kits, go kits, and those are very important. The scary times that we're living in, it's good to be prepared. Um, but make sure that you have spare batteries because what's the point to a flashlight with no battery? All right. And then with winter heat management, maybe I have a couple of notes there. Let me switch back to the other camera because my arm is getting tired. Okay, so with um, heat, heat management and control, we know that has to do with our heat bill too, for many of us. Um, the best way to make sure that you are keeping that bill down and maintaining your house as warm as possible or as cold as possible in the summer for us is to make sure that the seals around your windows and your doors are tight. So there's some simple things you can do. You can buy weather stripping to go on. I'm sure you guys have seen that before. It's adhesive, the adhesive type is what I usually like to use. And it's a foam. I wish I did have a piece of that around, but I have a video about that too, I think on my channel, <laughs> that you're going to go around your window. If you feel like there's some kind of draft, or even if your windows just have some age on them, you wanna make sure that you put that ceiling down there. Let me see if I can find that on my other camera. I think I can, I can find it real quick. Just a second, I can find an example of that.
I muted again, sorry. So here is an example of the weather stripping. If you can see it right there, that gray lining, I kind of stuffed it in the cracks around this window. So that's an example of a way that you can help your heating bills and also it helps keep bugs out. I've also put it around my door down here. And if you can see it there, it's really dark, but it's stuffed in there. Because it is foam, it kind of compresses on itself, but it saves you so much. It helps cut back so many drafts. So since it is just foam, you want to make sure that you are checking the status of that. Make sure that it hasn't started to decompose after three or four years, maybe. I think the weather stripping will probably start to give. You may need to reapply it. Of course, if you can't afford to um, get new windows and doors, by all means, do that. But these things are all part of maintenance. When you have your own home or when you uh, are leasing a home or when you're going to be long term in a space, all these things are going to help you as far as your bills, your health, and yes, all of those things. So um, the other, the last item I think I had for, and this is, of course, all based on my research because I don't live in the cold, how you can protect your floors from salt and water and scratches in the in the wintertime. So you want to make sure that you have a nice mat out front. For us here in Florida, once again, it's just a matter of not tracking in so much dirt and maintaining your floors. Once again, you want to try to always have somewhere where you can clean off your feet before you come in because those small scratches over time, especially if it's a wood floor, are going to attract more dirt and it's going to attract more pests and that is not good for your health. So I think those are all the points that I had. Um, does anybody have any questions? Did I go over anything too fast? Um, yeah. That's it. I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. So when it comes to the filters, you were talking about air conditioning. Does that apply to the heaters for us up here, up north as well? Yes, many times it's all one system. So with the heater is going to be your air handler. And a lot of times those are located in the closet. So you want to be making sure that those, depending on where you are, if it's a rental situation, sometimes they will change your filters for you. Or if you yourself want to get your own filters, I want to everybody make sure you do your own research on what is actually filtering out. You want to get something that has... Um, uh, I don't know, like a high allergen rating, you know, it's just, there's all these different filters have gotten so much further past, like the basic blue filters from back in the day. So I wouldn't want to like suggest for anyone in particular. I, like I said, I just use this recyclable one myself and I tend to do like a aerosol spray that I make myself of peroxide on it. Cause that's really good for killing all the bad guys. So that's something that I do regularly after that soap and water clean off, then I'll also um, do that peroxide spray. I do the peroxide spray more often than I do the actual clean off as was evident earlier. So mm -hmm. yes, you if you have a vacuum cleaner, you could even go in there too, especially on these grates because they have those on yours in your apartment and your air handler too, to vacuum it, vacuum out that all that dust that you can. Okay. I see your comment there, Nicole. Thank you. He says, yeah, excellent points, especially a uh, hood filter. I had one apartment that was so gross. I didn't even know. Yeah. It's easy not to see it. And that takes me too to the fans. If you have a fan of any kind too, those, cause they're often in motion are often ignored and they're covered with dust. Once again, it's going to affect how it works and how you feel. Because dust, almost everybody's allergic to dust mites. Little things too, like your mattress, making sure it's in a zipped um, help uh, plastic, you know, cover covering it that mattress so that it doesn't get full of dust mites. All these things are like maintenance items, but they're things that um, no matter where you live, it, it's just it's going to affect your health. It's going to affect the, your air quality. So I would highly recommend you look into all of that. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to your generator for mm -hmm. if the power goes out or something, um, what would be in your experience or what one have you, have you used or do you have, or do you have as like far a gas as powered one, a gas powered one, or do you have like electrical with, with battery that you charge or what do you do? There are so yeah. many out there. I, I only have a little inverter because 
<laughs> I live in a tiny place. And where I live, there are lots of other friends nearby and they have a generator. So, mm. but I've installed several generators. So um, I'm a fan of the gas powered ones. There lots of, there's lots of progress with the hybrid ones too. They use a little bit less gas and that are a little bit quieter. So it depends on what you're looking for. Um, I think I, I like the gas powered ones because they tend to have more kick. What you need to be looking at when you're getting it is how many things do you plan to run on it? Like how much do you plan to, do you just want a few lights on in your house or are you trying to run a refrigerator and a freezer and you have your AC on? So you need to make sure that you have the capacity to carry that. So I find that a lot of hybrid ones don't usually have the power to, to power all the things that you want on your house. But I always recommend that people, if they can, um, look at the reviews on YouTube before, uh, as far as someone that's used it and like the size square footage of your home or what you plan to be running on it. So it, ta it takes a lot of research, basically. It's just, if your generator basically says it's good for 4,000 watts, which is voltage times amps, you have, um, three circuits that you want to put on it but they're all low power circuits just like lights and such that you're more than okay but if you're going to put on a refrigerator and a freezer then you may need something with more power so i don't know if that that answers your question andrew i'm sorry kind of yeah because i'm uh, oh, i know the that formula um when it comes to installation for generators on a home as it were mm -hmm. is it because i know there's different types of generators like if it the power turns off it automatically kicks back on Ah, yeah. those, those are very nice. Now those yeah. are, um, you're talking about the Generac for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. The Generac, that's, that's the company that started one that automatically kicks in, or yeah. there are also certain generators that do that, but those, do those they, run they the whole entire carry. home or they'll, they'll just like run a certain amount, like a certain amount of circuits on that panel. Well, you know. it depends on how many panel boxes you have in the home. The generator will power whatever you have it connected to. Gotcha. So the electrician okay. will determine, and the electrician discussing with you what circuits are on there. Unless the Generac was installed at the same time you built the home, it right. won't automatically have everything on it. There's no way. So if you're having it installed after your home is built, then that will be determined completely by you and the electrician. Cool. That's Those are good questions, though. But yes, do lots and lots of research because there's there are so many different ones out there these days. If quietness is more important to you, then you know the a lot of these hybrid ones are way quieter than the old school ones. Um, if you don't want to have to have a lot of gas in storage, you don't have room for a lot of gas, then the hybrid ones also a good idea too. Cool. Thank you, and I really enjoyed your presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. No problem. We'll see you guys later. I gotta go. <laughs> okay. Make sure you like right. and subscribe Thank my everyone. channel. <laughs> yes. Any other okay, questions? It, oh, I'm sorry. Is it on the chat? Your your YouTube channel? Yes. Let me put. Um, yeah. Drop it again. The, the one I'm talking about now is she's electric. Yeah, because I'm gonna like it and subscribe to yes. it. There it is. Electric chic is a more frou frou channel of mine. That's makeup and and hair. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Okay, okay. <laughs> that might not be your like, thing, but if it is, one. I'm gonna skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> then right, just go right, straight guys. to She's Electric. Great. That's got all my DIYs, and I have at least two um, generator installations there. So Sounds I'll give good. you some tips. Right. I'll put that on my uh, Instagram. I'll, I'll load it up. <laughs> I'll advertise it. <laughs> all right. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, guys. So we will uh, switch over to our next topic then. So for those that do not know me, I am Tashina Gonzalez. I live in Metro Detroit, and I am a holistic wellness coach and as well as self-development coach. And so um, just briefly, 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 I was pretty sickly child with tons of allergies and was told I had a weak immune system and just dealt with that for most of my life. And then I got to the year of 2012 and I started to have um, a health issue after health issue after health issue. So it started out with gut issues where I was in and out of the hospital for an entire summer of 2012. Six months later, I had high blood pressure. Six months later, I started to have hormone issues where I um, ended up having to have a minor surgery for that. I was in two accidents in six months. 
during that time as well. So I had body pain, had to be in physical therapy. And then after that, I started to have some mood issues and feeling at the time relatively young in my early and mid thirties, I was like talking to everyone else and everyone around me also tended to have a lot of body pain, hormone issues, things of that nature. So I thought this is not the way they're supposed to be. This is, there's, there's gotta be a natural way. There has to be a different way to approach some of these things. And so I started trying to Google my way to good health, which was really slow. And then I ended up stumbling across a company that actually provided a bunch of education for me, as well as groups of products that helped me in every single area that, of that, that I was working with. And so now, um, six years later, I'm not on any medication. I feel better than I've ever felt. And that motivated me to get certified in herbal and nutrition and, um, and just all types of holistic things, mindfulness, and then eventually getting my self-development certification as well. So I'm going to share with you guys with everything that is circling the planet right now and with um, us, those of us that are up north and we are dealing with some of the colder weather, some of the things that you need to think about getting on hand that will help boost your immune system and give you some protection and some of the things that we are using Again, me specializing in whole food supplements and um, essential oils and plants and herbs and things of that nature, as well as toxic free living. I'm going to share with you seven things that I would recommend for people to have in order to do all those things, boost their immune system and protect themselves. So the first thing I'm going to start with is an essential oil blend. This essential oil blend is called Thieves, which has a very interesting name. And this actually is going to boost your immune system. I actually take this internally and I make a detox tea that I used to be on three medications for allergies. Like I couldn't breathe my entire, the entire year because I'm allergic to dust, mold, pollen, grass, five different types of trees, basically everything else died. And so I could never breathe my entire life. I now take zero, zero allergy medicine, nor do I get colds in the winter anymore because I've First of all, take the toxins out of my home, and then I do things in order to boost my immune system. So one of the things that I do in the morning is I have um, a detox tea, immune boosting tea of apple cider vinegar, organic honey, half of a squeeze of lemon, and a drop of this Thieves. So why is this called Thieves? And we're going to talk about a couple other things that has that name with it. So this was inspired by the legend of 15th century French thieves during the Black Plague that robbed the dead and dying, but they were using aromatic combinations of clove, rosemary, vinegar, and other botanicals that they believe provided protection while they were stealing. So the French authorities at that time recognized that there was such a value in this mixture that upon the thieves' capture, they received a more merciful punishment on the condition that they divulged the ingredients of their secret formula. So this was crafted in the spirit of that legendary co combination and it has clove oil, cinnamon bark oil, eucalyptus radiata oil, rosemary oil, and lemon oil. So you can go on some reputable sites that have medical information and you can see all of the properties that those would do for your immune system. So that's the first thing. The second thing is one of our favorite topics that we're, <laughs> we're buying all the time is our hand sanitizer. We're using way more hand sanitizer. Now, I actually work in the area of facilities management. And one of the things that we do try to stress in that area is making sure that we have green or toxic free products. And so this particular hand sanitizer is gonna have that same power of thieves. Again, if it was good for a previous plague, why not try it in the time that we're living in right now? So this actually has is aloe based and it is going to be non-toxic. Good. You can have it around kids, your pets. And I don't know if anyone has seen like some of the articles that have talked about the dangers and the sanitizers and overuse of sanitizers, but that has been a concern with this. You're actually not going to have that concern. The other thing that we have to do all the time right now is disinfect, right? So we have our thieves spray. So I have this with me all the time, spraying it all over the place. You can, I spray it on my mask before I leave anywhere. And again, it's gonna have that same power of thieves in it, and it's, but it's gonna be toxic free. And it's actually going to, um, again, be okay for your pets, your kids. So it, both of these are travel size, very small, 
convenient. You can carry them with you. The other thing that a lot of people are struggling with are with their masks. So one suggestion in order to help those is to just suck on a cough drop before you put that mask in. That's one thing that I have to do all the time. I actually have, because of the type of asthma that I have, I actually have a really, really, really hard time with the mask. I actually have been approved by my doctor not to go back to work if we are still wearing masks at that point in time. Um, so this particular cough drops, again, the Thieves brand, it is going to help with sore throats, relief costs, and cool nasal passages. But again, before I put on my mask, um, in order to help with some of the issues, the breathing issues, as well as um, the moisture in your mouth, use a cough drop. Now, the other thing that we are all, all dealing with right now is increased stress, right? <laughs> Every time something else is going on in the news, we're dealing with increased stress. And that is another area that plants can help us with. So one of our favorite uh, essential oil blends is stress away. So, and why would you wanna use aromatherapy for stress just in general? The One of the main reasons is because your emotions are connected to your limbic system in your brain. And aromas or smells directly affect your limbic system. So one of the quickest ways to improve your mood or to change your emotions is to ensure that you're using some type of aromatherapy every day. So this particular blend, Stress Away, is amazing and wonderful. It has lime and vanilla. It has copaiba in it, which comes from um, Brazil and helps with ment releasing mental rigidity. We um, produce this in, in Ecuador. It has lavender, so it has all types of things that are just gonna help you feel great, relax you, reduce the stress, and make you feel amazing. And one of the next things that is super, super, super important is our vitamin D. So I probably everyone has seen, again, in the news or article that is talked about, one of the things that I saw is that 80% of the people that are have been affected and have passed away from what's going on right now are vitamin D deficient. So that's super important for everyone to be taking vitamin D. And for those of us, again, that are living and watching the replay of this or are here that are in the North, it's even more important for us. And so this particular one um, actually is going to help with your, with healthy muscles, immune nervous system function, and it has 250% of your vitamin D. It's also infused with organic lemon balm essential oil. Again, something to research and something for you to look up. That actually helps with your mood. It's another thing that's gonna help with your mood. And the other thing is essential oils are lifebloods of plants. And so they oxygenate the plants. And when we take them in, they oxygenate us as well. Getting more oxygen into your cells makes everything more bioavailable. So taking a, a vitamin blend like this that is infused with essential oil, you're gonna get way more absorption from it. And I've seen that actually in my blood work from taking certain things. And we have some videos where we've talked about that as well. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about which I don't have the bottle with me, I only have some of them like in my little vitamin thing, is vitamin C. This is another thing that everyone in the news has been talking about or articles that is super important for our immune system during this time, again, with what's circling the planet. So vitamin C is essential for our immune system, for metabolizing things. And the one that I use is a chewable vitamin C. It also has a lot of different things in it, like camu camu, acerola, cherry, rose hips. Um, it delivers polyphenols, carotenoids, and optimal amounts of vitamin C in a convenient, chewable tablet. So those are the seven things that I want to share with you in order for you to, on, at minimum, have on hand so that you can have a healthy immune system during this period. So just to recap, my favorite Thieves Essential Oil Blend, and I have a video on that detox tea that I do every single morning. All of us know we have to have our hand sanitizer. And again, there's some dangers in using 
um, hand sanitizers that have have a uh, too much alcohol in them and chemicals and are not toxic free. We're going to use our disinfectant to get everything clean. We're going to be using a, a nice stress relieving essential oil blend to reduce our stress. And then our cough drops as well. Anytime we feel any type of tickle, but also before we put on a mask, our vitamin D and our vitamin C. So that is all I want to share. I usually go through my stuff pretty, pretty fast. So David, you put it in the um, comments, is the aloe-based hand sanitizer the best? So the aloe is what's going to make this actually moisturizing and the basis of it so that it does not dry it out and you don't get those side effects. But this, this sanitizer actually kills 99.99% .99 of all the germs. And in addition to that, this spray was actually approved in the Philippines by the, the whatever organization is equivalent to their FDA to kill the thing that we're worried about right now. So. Thank you. Any other questions? So again, um, if anybody wants to get with me, I put way up, I'll, re, I'll repost it. All the ways to get in contact with me, I do one-on-one -on -one consultations with individuals. You can find over 700 videos on my YouTube channel, um, 150 of which are in Spanish. And I have different channels. So I have some on um, mental wellness. I have some, uh, I have motivational. I have um, general health. I have a bunch of different, different channels, but I have things like natural ways to deal with high blood pressure, um, hormone support, just all types of different things. So you just find the correct channel. And a lot of times you can actually put in the thing that you're looking for in my full name and you'll be able to find some of that stuff as well. And also I, again, I do one-on-one -on -one consultations. I'll drop my Candly link separately as well. And we can chat if you have any additional specific needs, because again, as a certified holistic wellness coach, that is what I do. I help people work on those. Any other comments or questions from anyone? No, thank you. That was an excellent presentation. Of course, you are pro 700 videos. I had no idea. Well, I so I, I repurpose, I repurpose, <laughs> I repurpose, right? So I do yeah. Facebook and Instagram lives and I've done it for four years, a Feel Good Friday in English and Spanish regularly and I upload it to YouTube, so. Four years of teaching. known Jashina like about three months. I'm going to say this woman is about the most organized <laughs> human being I've ever met. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely amazing. I don't know how you keep all those wheels going. You are amazing. And you're like, I feel like we need a schedule for that. Whereas I'm like, <laughs> right, right. I like organization, but I'm like, I'm not volunteering. I'm barely keeping myself together. Right, right, right. So thank you for that. And thanks for getting this together. Yeah, and it was fun. Thank you all for coming. You're wonderful. Yeah, we greatly Thank appreciate you. it. So this will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And as long as you marked going or interested to the event, I will send you a copy of it because I know some people left early or came late, but we will have all this information available to you so that you can get back with us. All Are right? you guys going to have another one? We most certainly can. Yes, we're going to have, I'd like to have a collab on my channel. I'm taking yes. Tashina there live on the, my YouTube channel, uh, probably next month. Okay. So I'll announce for sure there, David, I think you're subscribed there. Everybody subscribe mm -hmm. if you aren't yet, please. I'll definitely, definitely announce it there. Yes. Thank you Alrighty. so much for your support again, guys. You don't know how much yep. it means. Greatly appreciate you guys. Have an amazing evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you as well. Bye. Quick reminder, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, hit the notifications button. Oh goodness, why is my collar popped in the wrong way?
He's trying to be cool so much for that. All right. So please help a sister out. Buy me a coffee if you want to. And if you're into DIY stuff, check out my other channel. All those links will be down below. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.